What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Well, it's officially desert time. We gotta go get fuel. We just filled up the Jeep. You know, this is, I, I gotta say the worst part of the desert is gassing everything up and getting ready because of how expensive everything costs. So, for example, this thing just filled, filled her up. Uh, it was like 68 bucks or 65 bucks, something like that. Gotta go fill up the Ram now. She's, I think, got half a tank in it. So we'll see how much she takes. Then gotta go fill up the toy hauler because that's going to take probably, I think, 40 gallons uh, to fill that thing up. And then uh, the wife's gotta go grocery shopping and it's a lot of money, you guys, to, you guys wonder, you know, what it costs to go to the desert. Um, it's it's pretty dang expensive. So now let's start the old rammer up and uh, we'll first see how much fuel she's got. Well, she still sounds like a beauty. Yeah, so she's got a little, bit under half so we got to fill her up I do want to mention something real quick a lot of you guys ask me Eddie do you drive with your exhaust brake on yes I do drive with it on but I drive with it on auto not on full uh, supposedly and I mean it I don't know the auto says that it will throttle the I guess the the, the, the veins and the turbo so it does not you know so pretty much Right now, I'm gonna let go of the gas. Now, you see the VGT right there, the top right, and the exhaust pressure. Now, I don't see any throttling or anything going on, which I'm okay with that, but why I use the auto is because, hold on, let me get going a little faster here, is because as soon as I apply the, okay, now look at that. See, I didn't even apply the brake, and it's slowing me down. That's what's weird about this auto. So, it's supposed to, when you hit the brake, it will pretty much kick on. And then when you turn the brake, pretty much I'm off the brake now. My foot's not on it. Oh, there, now it just released. See, now look, now it's engaging and my foot is still off the brake. I'm not touching the brake. So, I don't know. I'm not sure what the best one to use, if it's full or full is better or if auto is better. I assumed auto is better. Now. I will say when I'm on the freeway and I let go of the pedal, it does not kick on the exhaust brake. What I'm noticing is only if I am, for an example like this hill, coming down a hill uh, where I guess, I don't know if it feels, much, I, I don't know, I don't know what, what how it works, but every time I come down a hill, the exhaust brake kicks on, see, now I let go, it's not kicking on. It's so random. I don't know what it has to do with but if any of you guys out there that are exhaust brake masters or know a lot about this system, uh, let me know. I'm just, I'm curious. And if you're wondering why, well, I use the auto exhaust brake just so I don't have to ride, you know, my brakes. I mean, if you got something that's gonna help you stop, I would use it. You know, I wouldn't uh, try not to use the, the brakes as much as you can so you can, you know, have them last you. I mean, shoot, I know on my 08 Duramax, I had like 60 or 70,000 miles on it, and they were like brand new, the brakes. It looked like, you know, they were never even used. But you can also notice when the exhaust brake is on, the exhaust pressure skyrockets, goes to 35. Now, when I hook the trailer up to this thing, and when I'm coming down the hill with that big ding ding, this exhaust pressure goes to like 55, 56. So it really makes a huge, huge difference. I notice when, I don't know, maybe if it's because there's weight back there or nose or because it's in tow haul mode. These are things that I'm, I've been just playing with and trying out to see, um, you know, pretty much how it works. Also, thank you guys, huge, big, big shout out uh, to all you guys that explain to me these auxiliary switches. So if you guys don't know about these switches, I was a little upset that they only gave you power to two. I wanted to figure out how to get power to all of them. A lot of you guys commented. I don't know who was the first, but thank you guys. I appreciate it. Uh, all you guys that let me know how to fix it. Uh, what you need to do, guys, it's very simple, is I just went into the, I think it's commercial settings, I believe it was, in the truck, and you can literally adjust these switches to be on or, um, momentary and you can have them on with the battery or with the key on so I ended up just having all of these active uh, on the battery because I'm going to have all these full for example the compressor the train horn the lights everything I want to be able to use that stuff 
uh, while you know the key is not on because sometimes we're in the desert and we need air on as you guys know on the Duramax I used to just go down below flip the switch and it would kick on the compressor so same thing here I'm gonna hit that auxiliary one that's going to kick on the compressor for me so that way we don't have to you know turn the key on the truck or bother with you know starting it or doing anything like that all right guys ram is full it says i can go 500 and i'll have to turn the wheel here i'll show you 510 miles from full to empty so i, I don't know how accurate that is which i'm sure it's not going to be that accurate when i hook up the big ding ding to it it's probably going to change also, we filled up the regular, got the fuel tanks uh, back there, the VP cans. That was another, you know, 100 bucks here. And then another, I don't know, 88 to fill this up. So, and then the Jeep took another like 70, I think, something like that. So, we're pretty much already, I want, oh, and by the way, that's, we're still going to have to fill the uh, toy hauler up, put more fuel in it. But uh, that, these are just, I take these gas cans just because, so I can just get some fuel in there now. So we probably, I think I spend maybe four or five hundred bucks in fuel, which to me is not too bad because if you guys know like uh, my pops' buggy, uh, like all my uncle's buggies, those things, they need that VP, the race fuel. And man, sometimes I pick some of that stuff up for my pops and oh boy, it's crazy. It's like nine dollars a gallon, something nuts like that. I got to get like 30 gallons of it. So it probably cost them over a grand in fuel. Me, four or five hundred bucks of fuel, yeah, I can live with that, it's not too bad. All right guys, we have just put all of the fuel in the tank. Hey, how you doing there, old girl? Put all the fuel in the tank, and we put uh, 25 gallons. So the generator, all right, I don't really use the generator too much, because I use uh, the little one. You can see I have 681 hours on it. Nah, damn, see, I figured this was a 50 gallon tank, so, I put 25 gallons, gave me half, so we will head to the gas station, get another 25 or 20, whatever it's going to take. I figured it was 40, 50 gallons though, so at least, you know, I because why I like to fill it up where that area is by my house, because it's hard to get the dang trailer in there to turn. That's what sucks. That's why I usually get the gas cans, but sometimes, uh, you know, there's another station. It's kind of out of the way. I'll fill the rest of it up and then head out. And for the people that tell me, Eddie, why the heck do you fill up water, fuel, everything right before you go? Well, guys, um, you know, honestly, I tried that whole theory of get to like El Centro, then fill up and, and, you know, go from there. But even with the Duramax, I'm not even saying because it's a Cummins, but even with the Duramax, when I fill this thing full or when it was, you know, wa no water, uh, no fuel in it, I didn't really notice a difference, you know, pulling wise. It pulled the same speed. Like I said, the Duramax are the same thing. The Cummins uh, pulled the same. So that's why I fill this thing full. As you guys see here, uh, the fresh water is full. Kept that thing full. My black, this thing always says fair. I don't know if something's stuck in the sensor. Gray one empty. Gray two is empty. Generator is not too, oh no, that's the fuel. So we'll fill the generator. Uh, I would probably put half in the generator. And I'll fill this for sure because the Jeep, uh, since my wife takes that Jeep out, boy, that Jeep sucks some fuel. So that's why I fill everything up, guys. I really don't notice a difference pulling this full or empty. And if you're wondering why this is here, yes, I just like to keep the tender on with this thing sitting in here. You know, I don't know. It just makes me feel better. All right, guys. We have loaded. Not really loaded, but we got the truck double stacked, double rowed all the way in the back, full of wood. Well, because it's going to be cold and we want a lot of wood. We got also the alkylator. He has picked up a truckload of wood. Uh, Michael, so we got a bunch of wood. I got homeboy over here. Homeboy. H Hello. Hello, do you copy? It's amazing what TV <laughs> does to these kids. I mean, I don't think he's blinked yet. Hello? Hey! Okay, he's not interested. Also guys, if you are wondering what desert we're going to, we are going to Gordon's Well. And you're going to be seeing this Jeep because the wife wants to take it and go over, go to the drags, go to the hill. Uh, she just wants to drive it around, cruise around. That's why I got to bring a lot of extra fuel. And of course, you're going to know, look at that, the new addition to the Jeep. Bam, we had to put that on. I wanted to put one on the back window, but with this dang tire, you can't really see, so it would kind of be a waste. 
But there you guys have it. That's all I got for you guys for today's video. If you guys like this video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. Don't forget to click subscribe. Peace. Yeah.